Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. As promised, today is Monday, so we're doing a very casual get ready with me. My hair is wet, I think for the first time on camera, but the reason it's wet is because I am testing out this K18 Biomimetic Hair Science Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. I've seen this all over social media. It's supposed to be the next big thing, a competitor to Olaplex. And they sent me this sample, so of course I had to test it out. This is actually, I believe, my third or fourth time using this leave-in mask. It's very strange because what you do is you wash your hair, shampoo as normal, and I think believe they specify that you need to use a like, sulfate-free shampoo, and then you skip conditioner. Do not condition. No leave-in mask, nothing like that in the shower. Towel dry your hair when you get out, and then you apply this K18 mask. It says three pumps. I have ridiculously long hair, so I do three pumps per side, and then I go in with an additional pump on the top. So I think it takes me seven pumps. But even with the small sample, and I have the larger mask as well, four times, and I still have plenty left, which is not bad. And then you just leave it in. You have to leave it in for, I believe, 20 minutes. Don't put anything else in your hair. No other styling products. Don't touch it with heat or try to blow dry it right away. You have to let the mask kind of sit in the damp hair for at least 20 minutes and then you can style as usual. It's for all hair types, you don't rinse it out. It says the patented peptide technology works to repair damage from bleach, color, chemical services, and heat, restoring strength, softness, smoothness, and bounce to hair. So it's really supposed to reverse damage. And I pulled up some information, do's and don'ts. It says, do use a clarifying shampoo if you have heavy product in your hair or dry shampoo. So I like to do a double wash anyways. Do wait the full four minutes. Okay, so it's not 20 minutes. <laughs> it's four minutes before styling or applying any other product. And it says do use every four to six shampoos consecutively to see and feel ongoing results. Don't condition your hair before application. Don't overuse and don't rinse out. I've definitely had it in for four minutes, probably closer to 20 to 30 at this point, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do my skincare, my makeup routine for the day, and then I will style my hair. That way it gives my hair a little bit longer to air dry. So last week I shared a few new Amore Pacific skincare products that I've been using. This is the new Ampule. I don't generally like to switch around my skincare too much, but I do have a couple new products here from 111 Skin. This is the Vitamin C Brightening Booster Serum. I used this for the past few days and I really like it. So I'm gonna use this this morning. I've been using the Ampule as well as this Vintage Essence from Amore Pacific, but 111 Skin sent over this Vitamin C Serum as well as this Y Theorem Repair Serum. This is a little bit thicker and it has a bit of an oily slip to it. So I use this in the evenings, but I think Vitamin C during the day is kind of perfect. And this is very thin, so you only need a dropper full. It's very watery. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of dripping through my hands. It instantly absorbs, so it doesn't leave any sort of film. It doesn't leave a slip or any sort of residue on the skin. My skin just kind of drinks it up. And then for moisturizer, I'm using the exact same thing I've been using, which is the number one de Chanel. I'm going to begin with eyes today. So first I'm going to apply the 111 Skin Celestial Black Diamond Eye Masks. I've never tried these before, but I'm excited. I love to use an under eye mask as I'm getting ready because it also acts as a shadow shield and it will help prep the under eye so that it stays nice and plump. Oh, wow. That feels nice and cooling. Ooh, they feel so nice. And there's definitely serum on there, but not too much. Like they feel locked in place. I don't feel like these under eye masks are going to slowly slip down my face. It's probably my one complaint about some of the other eye masks. Oh, these feel nice. To prime the eyelids, I'm going in with just a smidge of the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I tried this for the first time last week and I fell in love. This is LN3. I went to order the lightest shade available from Sephora and it looks like it's currently sold out. But they do have it available on the LYS website, so I'm going to be patient. It's not like I desperately need more concealer. I'll wait and see if I can pick up the lightest shade from Sephora during the spring savings event. If it's still sold out, I'll just go ahead and order it from their website. It is that good. I really like how smooth it looks on the skin, but it doesn't look dry. It's not overly dewy. 
it's got a nice kind of satiny natural finish and it doesn't crease medium to full coverage they say it's full i would say it's closer to medium over the weekend my husband and i attended a really cute free neighborhood festival they call it carnival on the mile and it takes place in coral gables on miracle mile every year they've canceled it i believe the past two years or at least last year but it was back this year bigger and better than ever i think the crowd was even larger this year than it was a couple years ago and it's just something fun for families to do you kind of walk along the mile there's tons of food drinks uh, musical performances different staging areas everything you usually find at a fair or a farmer's market but it inspired me to pull out some colorful eyeshadow and create a carnival inspired makeup look so i have my utopian dream eyeshadow palette from from Pat McGrath Labs. It's about time I break free from my neutral eyeshadow run. I've picked up a Refer 15 brush and I'm going into this matte mauve shade right here. It's kind of the perfect transition shade in the palette. I'm picking this up and I'm going to dust this in the crease. Next I've picked up a Refer 13 brush and I'm going into the deepest shade in the palette, this chocolatey brown. And I'm going to pop this in the outer V. And then quickly I'm going back with my original brush and I'm just going to soften the outer crease. With a flat shader brush I'm picking up this really pretty pink shimmery shade and I'm going to pop this on the lid. I really love this color, but I'm so glad we have the under eye mask on because it's catching all of the little flakes and fallout. For an extra pop of sparkle and drama, I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to pop a little bit of this purple blue shimmer right on the center of the eyelid. This is so much fun. Definitely more of an evening, special occasion, carnival festival type of look. Before I remove the under eye mask, I wanna quickly add a little bit more depth, kind of touch up that outer V area. Because once we remove the under eye mask, I'm really not going to be able to go back and mess with the top of the eye. Otherwise, I could have fallout and it would just kind of defeat the purpose. One more time with the original matte mauve eyeshadow. The top of the eye look is now done, so we can go ahead and remove these under eye masks. So to prime my skin, I'm going in now with the Super Goop Glow Screen with SPF 40. This is perfect since I am running errands today, and it's what I used over the weekend when we were outside. So I'm just going to give this a really nice shake. It leaves such a pretty glow on the skin. It's kind of the perfect everyday primer. And if you don't like glow or you have really oily skin, they have the Unseen Sunscreen. There's an Everyday Sunscreen. They have several other options besides this glow screen. But if you like glow, this is so pretty. For foundation, today I pulled out my new Sublimage Le Tint. I picked this up recently. In fact, I shared a couple of these pieces in a recent luxury haul. But I've used this in the past, it was several years ago, and I ended up having to declutter the jar, which was very sad because it expired before I could use it in time. And I also didn't have the correct shade, so I picked up my typical B30, which is what I use in Chanel. I think my old jar was B50. Now these do run a little bit light, so I could make it work with two coats of sunless tan. It really wasn't right for a regular basis, so I ended up not using it, but this I plan to use, the entire jar. And I wore this out recently, a couple weeks ago, we attended a fundraising event and it was outside and I was a little bit nervous because this is a skincare foundation and I thought maybe it would end up being too greasy, but it looked incredible. So I'm really impressed with this foundation. I've managed to hold on to the brush. I haven't lost this yet, but I think I lost the little spatula. So I'm just gonna clean fingers, take a little bit. And you don't need much of this foundation. I 
I would say it has medium to full coverage. And I do really like the little brush that comes with it. It's $150, so I certainly do not want any of it to go to waste. And it's one of two Sublimage foundations. There is the Essence, and then this is the Latint. See, I have a little extra glow from the glow screen underneath. And then this foundation has a nice natural finish, so it doesn't look too matte, doesn't look too dewy. I think this combination is really nice because the Supermage Le Tint doesn't have any sun protection in it. So you're definitely going to want to make sure if you use this on a regular basis that you apply SPF underneath. I'm going back now with the LYS concealer. Just a little bit. Since it's not quite bright enough, I'm also going to add just a teeny tiny bit of my Pat McGrath Labs because that is really bright. I have the L1, the lightest shade. Last week I did an in-depth brow tutorial. Today I'm going to show you an in-depth eyeliner tutorial. It's that fox eye, kind of feline eye that I've been wearing for the past few months. Just like with eyebrows, practice really does make perfect. So there are only so many tips I can really give you. You just have to try it on your own and kind of perfect it over time. But there are a few little tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you today. I cannot get over how smooth that LYS concealer is. It really is a huge noticeable difference. I think it is so pretty. I cannot wait to pick up the lighter shade. To warm up my cheeks today, I'm going in with this Rare Beauty bronzer in the shade Power Boost. I think it's shade Power Boost. It's the bronzer stick. And these were sent to me complimentary. I think there are two shades and this is the lightest shade. I have used this before, but not on camera and I really liked it. But you can see somebody was nibbling on it. <laughs> Little Jazzy got a hold of this. Luckily, I was able to get it out of her mouth before she completely destroyed it. But that's why it looks like it's been chomped on. I don't remember what makeup video I was watching. I wish I could give this person credit, but they were using the Rare Beauty stick and they said you have to do one side at a time and then blend it out because it does tend to dry down. And I think that was my issue the first time I used this. So I'm just gonna do one side first. It blends really easily, but if you're not careful, it can kind of sit and kind of get stuck where you apply it. So you want to blend it pretty quickly. This is the foundation brush from Laura Geller, but it's kind of the perfect size for blending cream contour or cream bronzer. I really like this brush. I love the color of this bronzer and I really like the way it blends. I need to go back. Just going back quickly to make sure I didn't blend it too far down. It almost dries down to a powdery finish. This looks so much better today than it did the first time I used it. I think that trick really works, doing one side at a time. To set my face, I'm going in with this NARS, ooh, NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder, the pressed version. I really love this. This has been my compact powder of choice lately. And then the Chanel loose powder is my typical loose setting powder, but I'm just gonna use this since it's here. Because it says crystal and you can tell it has a little bit of a sheen to it, I always thought this was gonna go on and be very luminous and dewy and radiant and it's not. It's very light, incredibly finely milled, but it doesn't add too much glow under the eye which is great. For blush, I pulled out my Hermes 28 Rose Plume Blush. It's been a while since I've touched these Hermes blushes and I spent a lot of money on them, so I need to use them. And I have my Sephora Pro number 96 brush. 
And this is such a pretty pink and I think it'll pair really nicely with the eye. I'm just kind of dusting it in this area right here. If you missed my last get ready with me video, I'm no longer applying blush up here because of the eyebrow and eyeliner technique I've been using. It creates kind of a scrunched effect up here. So I'm taking the blush a little bit lower, closer to the apple of the cheek. I still want to lift the face, so I'm not taking it too far down, but I just kind of scooted it in a little bit. Complexion's just about done now. I still need to apply highlighter, but I'm going to wait until my eyes are done so I can highlight the inner corner and the brow bone as well. So I just picked up a pencil brush and I'm going back into the original mauve eyeshadow and I am going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. This is typically when the makeup look starts to come together. Every time I'm editing these get ready with me videos, I'm always shocked, just surprised as you are that it ends up coming together at the end. I'm back, I just filled in my eyebrows off camera so I could look really closely in the mirror and then see big picture in the larger vanity mirror. So today I'm going to be using the NARS Climax Liquid Eyeliner in Explicit Black. Any liquid eyeliner would do. I like this pen because it tapers to a point, but it's sort of flat. So it allows you to get very thin and precise, and that's exactly what we need. I'm gonna do my best to scoot in a little bit closer. My eye keeps twitching over here, so if you see a slight movement, that's what's happening. It's just a little eye twitch. I get it pretty often, actually. So a recent change I've made with my eyeliner is I've been creating the tail first. Usually I would start with the inner corner of the eye and then work my way out and then create the tail. But the reason why I've been starting with the tail of the eyeliner is because I want to match the angle of the brow up here. So we've been angling the brow out and lifting it a bit higher. And not that this should be parallel, but it needs to be lifted, but also more horizontal. So I used to kind of angle up and create a wing that looks closer to this kind of angle up towards the tail of the brow. Now that I'm dragging the tail of the brow out a little bit and creating a more shallow angle here, I kind of want to lower the angle of the wing. I don't want to go straight out, but I also don't want to be at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to angle closer to horizontal, but I'm kind of following the same angle, I guess, as maybe like my cheekbone. And then for the inner corner of the eye, I want to create a straight line. So if I just hold the eyeliner here, if this is the angle that I'm doing on the outer half, I want to match that angle on the inside. I know a very popular technique I've heard from a lot of makeup artists is that they'll say, just continue the same angle on the inner corner, or keep that same angle. No, you don't want to do that because what's going to happen is you're going to go too far down. And if you have this going too far down and this going too far up, it looks a little bit wonky instead of looking like this we want to make it even so that it looks like a straight line. So you're actually going to extend and create sort of a fake almond feline eye. And you actually want this to be a little bit more shallow as well. You're gonna go a little bit more horizontal. So again, starting with the outer corner. And I'm kind of starting from the lower, lower lash line here. And flick out a little bit, create a little line. Probably could have gone even more flat, but I didn't want to mess it up. I flicked my eyeliner, now I need to bring it back. I want to connect somewhere over here and I'm going to make this sort of a straight line out to connect. And then I'm just going to fill it in. And the point is when I squint, I want this to look pretty flat. See, I probably should have taken this even a little bit lower. I made my best attempt to fix it with a little precision brush and this one size beauty makeup remover spray. I feel like if I keep going over it, it's just going to get thicker and thicker and I don't want that to happen. So this is where we are, but you can see it's a little bit more flat and it goes out to the side a little bit more. 
For the inner lash line, I want to line as thin as possible. So that's when I flip this eyeliner on the side. I'm being very careful. I'm going to go as close to the lash line as possible. It's only when I reach here, about two-thirds of the way around, that the line is going to start to get a lot thicker as it tails out to meet the wing. But I want it to be kind of straight, as straight as possible. Now I'm going to do the inner wing. The trick is to only extend a teeny tiny bit. Do far less than you think you need. It doesn't have to be dramatic. If you're going out or you're creating a really dramatic smoky eye, then yeah, you can extend it a little bit further out. But for every day, if you just want to create a cute little fox eye, one, I would recommend using a brown eyeliner instead of black. That would make it a little bit softer as well, but also you just want to take it out a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. And when you connect back, I'm connecting back straight to the center. I'm really just doing it the teeny, tiniest little wing. I would end up creating a line that looked like that, but that's not what I want. I want it to be in line with the eyeliner. So I'm going to tilt up and go a little bit out. That way it creates an elongated almond shape. I'm keeping it right in that inner corner area. The entire triangle is coming straight from the inner corner of my eye. When you do the second eye, you want to match the angle of the first eye. So again, I'm going to look here. Yes, I'm going a little bit further out. So we want to try to match that on the other side. made the line as thin as possible on the inside. Depending on your eye shape, you may have to add a little bit of width right at the center, right above the iris to create, instead of a perfectly flat, you want it to be a little bit rounded just so it matches your natural eye shape. So I add a little bit of width right above the iris just so it's a nice smooth transition. That's going to depend, I think, on the shape of your natural eye. So now I have to do the little inner wing, and I'm going to match this angle that I've created already. I want to pay attention to this angle. I also want to pay attention to this angle, <laughs> because if this looks straight and this is straight, but these two are off, it can look a little bit funny. Perfect. I actually think this one is a little bit better. If you look closely at the inner corners, you can see they're not angled down. They're almost angled out towards each other, slightly down, but only slightly. They're kind of extending out towards each other and it just brings the eye in a little bit. So we're kind of changing the shape of the eye so it looks a little bit longer this way, a little bit longer this way. And as long as you pay attention to your angles, you don't bring it in too far, teeny tiny bit makes such a huge difference. I think you'll be really happy. You have to play around with it. You have to just trial and error. The black looks beautiful for evenings, weekends, special occasions, but I think on a daily basis, a really pretty light brown eyeliner would look really nice with this technique. I picked up my Hutopian Dream eyeshadow palette again and a little precision brush. And I am going into this really pretty pearl shade. And I'm going to show you how I highlight the inner corner of the eye. I want to be really precise, but I'm going to bring my inner corner highlight right underneath that tail that we created. I call it the inner wing, inner V. I'm not sure what to call it, but right here. right in the tear duct, but then I'm also going to follow it in. I'm also going to use that to highlight the brow bone. I always emphasize the highlight at the highest point of the arch. 
and then I blend out on both sides. But I want the bulk of my highlight to be here. Mascara I'm going to do off camera and I'm using the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. I've been using this I think every single day lately. I'll probably use this until I use it up or it dries out, whichever comes first, because I just really like this brush. And what's funny is that the first time I used it, I didn't really like it. I was a bit confused by it. But once you get a hang of it, it's just incredible. It's either this or the Gucci mascara for me. Mascara is done, hair is done. So the last step is lips. And all I really did with my hair is I blow dried it using my Christoph Robin round brush and the Dyson hair dryer. And then I went in with my T3 World Trio. I used the one and a half inch barrel. And it falls pretty quickly because I have long hair, but it just gives it a, a nice soft wave. I think this looks really pretty. So hair is now done. And for lipstick, I pulled out Pillow Talk Lip Liner, pretty standard, but I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these new Chanel lipsticks. This is the Rouge Allure L'Extre in the shade, let's see, this is the pink that I love. 822, Rose Supreme. I thought this would look really nice with the eye look. Now, if you haven't seen my review of these lipsticks, definitely check it out. The formula is nice, but I have a lot of very strong opinions on the packaging and the price versus the amount of product. I don't wanna say I don't recommend these lipsticks because the shades are pretty. Personally, I would buy the Rouge Coco Bloom or the Le Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu lipstick over the new X-Ray. And if you're looking for a refillable lipstick and that was a huge deal to you, I would recommend the Guerlain Rouge G lipsticks. At least then you get to choose a case. They have so many beautiful options. They're weighted, it feels, the packaging feels much higher quality versus this new Chanel lipstick. I was really looking forward to refillable packaging as well, so I know some people just want that. This is such a pretty color. I love it. I love this color so much. It's bold, but it's not red. It's still pink. So I think this is probably going to become one of my everyday shades. I think it is so nice. Rose Supreme. It's gorgeous. I stand by what I said though. I don't know if it's necessarily worth spending the $55 or $40 for the refill. I think I have similar shades from Chanel and other formulas. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy this lipstick just to have this color. I'll need to go through my collection. I'm thinking about doing another entire Chanel lipstick collection video. I did that, I think it's been over a year at this point, so I'm certainly due for another one. And also my next Get Ready With Me video, I was thinking about doing a full face of Chanel, full face of old Chanel products, kind of the classics, things that you probably already have in your collection that was highly requested. So if you have any other get ready with me makeup video ideas, let me know down below in the comment section. But that's what I'm planning to do next week is the full face of old Chanel. This is the finished hair and makeup look for the day. And overall, I think it came together really nicely. I love this fun purple sparkly eyeshadow. It's very different. The foundation looks amazing. I'm so happy with that Sublimage La Tint. In fact, all of the complexion products look really nice. I also really like the Rare Beauty bronzer stick. Of course, I can't say enough great things about this LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I love it so much. And then my little Rose Plume blush from Hermes. Happy to be getting use out of this again. 
I'm hoping the in-depth eyeliner technique was helpful to any of you who've maybe been interested in trying it out, but you aren't sure where to begin. But that completes today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.